Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Hetfi and in this video I will be discussing with you techniques that can allow you to gain a first class when you're writing an essay. Now please do bear in mind that this is an exhaustive list of all the different types of techniques that are out there, nor do I claim for these techniques to be any superior than the other techniques that are out there. There are simply techniques that have always worked for me when I've come to write my essay and have allowed me to successfully gain a first class. So I've split this video into four subtopics that I'd like to discuss with you guys today, beginning with just a brief introduction in how we could go about planning for our essay, followed by looking at how to structure and format our introduction so that the reader is able to gain a holistic overview of what that essay entails and more importantly, why that essay is important and what information the reader will gain from reading that essay. I also want to discuss the appropriateness of using any images, diagrams, text and how we could utilise those to enhance the reader's understanding. And finally, I want to discuss critical analysis or critical review of any journal articles that we've read and how we can then incorporate them within our essay. So please do make sure to follow along right till the end in order to reap the most benefit out of this video. And right towards the end, as a bonus, I will be sharing with you just a few simple techniques that you can apply to further enhance the structure and format of your essay. So without further ado, let's get started in today's video. So when we come about to plan, I believe, you know, essays, it's extremely important that you're familiar with the subject matter and that you've got a thorough understanding of what that topic entails because at the end of the day when you come about to plan and write your essay whilst you're focusing on specific aspects if you've got a general idea of what that topic is it becomes relatively easy for you to you know um, link factors and associate it with other aspects within that topic as well to showcase that you've got a, a broad understanding of that topic itself whilst focusing on kind of the specific niche that your essay is about. So you know I'd highly recommend that when, before you start planning and writing your essay you undertake further reading and do a thorough background reading uh, in that subject matter to gain that holistic overview uh, because when you come back to plan, you'll already have formed an inclusion exclusion criteria of things that you want to include and things that you don't want to include, making it a lot easier for you to plan and subsequently write out your essay. So moving on, once we've done our further reading and our, our, our planning, how we could go about structuring and formatting our introduction. Now, the best way I, I believe, you know, for any introduction to be formulated is by providing the reader with an overview of what that essay will entail and what they will gain from reading that essay. And the way I like to do this is by simply stating it in words, you know, right towards the end of my introduction, you know, this essay will examine or this essay will illustrate, present, evaluate, and then follow it on with whatever subject matter it is that it entails. Now this will provide the reader with, you know, an overview of what to anticipate uh, and more importantly, uh, you know, what those subsequent paragraphs will entail and making it a lot easier for you to, uh, you know, just focus on each paragraph with a specific uh, motive. So let's say, for example, you know, we're looking at the, ca the causation of a disease you know, the first paragraph will be kind of looking at the disease itself, you know, we might discuss its pathology, you know, uh, and then look at different causations that may lead to it in the subsequent paragraphs. So it gives it that nice clear structure uh, and prevents repetition and for us to have irrelevant text or waffling on basically. And so that you're meeting those word, word count um, whilst, you know, focusing on that subject matter. So that's definitely something that's extremely crucial. So an example of that, which I'm about to show you guys, is of one of my own essays that I've wrote and submitted, um, focusing on one hippolindal gene, also referred to as v um, VHL, and how it may correspond to clear cell real cell carcinoma in my essay. So here is one of the essays that I wrote, and I'd like to place emphasis on the last sentence of my introductory paragraph. Uh, which showcases the importance of why it is that I am writing that essay as well as highlighting what my subsequent paragraphs will include by numbering them from one to four. Uh, and this is a fantastic way of not only providing a focus and aim for yourself uh, as to what you want your subsequent paragraphs to entail, but also making it very easy for the reader to navigate themselves through the essay. So it's definitely something I'd recommend when you're writing your essay. 
Um, moving on from my introduction, I really wanted to discuss the appropriateness of utilising any images, figures, diagrams, charts, tables within our essay. Um, and a common misunderstanding is that, you know, they are there to, uh, they're there to enhance kind of the, the structure or the format or how the presentation of the essay. Um, and that's not necessarily true. Um, nor is the fact that the more complicated your diagram, your figure is, you know, the better marks you'll gain or, you know, the more uh, sophisticated your work will look. That's not true. Um, I think it's, it's, very, it's very much up to your own understanding of those figures, diagrams, tables, charts, and you will gain marks based on your understanding of those and your interpretations of those. Often we don't realise that, you know, our marks that are allocated for those figures, diagrams, tables, charts are based on how well we're able to incorporate them within our essay, and more importantly, how we are able to then interpret those essays from our, uh, sorry, no, interpret those figures um, and discuss them within our essay and appropriately provide a figure legend that is corresponding to that figure, diagram, table, chart that we have kind of included within our essay. You get marked based on your own, own level of understanding and interpretation, not how complicated, how sophisticated or how nice they look. So avoid utilising images that you don't understand. Um, don't provide them simply because they look nice or that you know they look more aesthetic or make the present uh, make your essay stand out um you know you will not gain many marks for that um i would say you'd you should rather opt for simpler you know diagrams charts tables um if you understand them better and are able to incorporate them well within your essay then for more complex ones it's just something that i would you know highly advise you to do and consider when you're when you're when you're thinking of incorporating any images diagrams charts uh you know does it help improve your essay does it, it provide any uh context to the reader you know does it clarify anything you know how how would you justify its use within your essay is extremely important and so beware and be sure to question these things when you are considering of adding any images to your essay or figures diagrams tables now, this is crucial uh, because irrespective of what essay you're writing, you will be asked and you will be anticipated to have done critical analysis or critical review of any journal articles, textbooks or websites that you gain your, uh, your information from, uh, which essentially is considering the author's thesis and, you know, the pros and cons and the limitations that it, that it consists of. Um, and looking at it from a holistic overview to compare and contrast it with other articles whether they are coherent or whether they are opposing uh, and then providing your own justification so for me if i was to do critically analyze an article if for example it's for a medicinal treatment and its effectiveness i would be considering you know the population size what the results were how the author concluded and got those results and i would then contrast them with other authors or other studies and see what how they have concluded what results they gained um and compare the two and then give my own opinion as to whether or not I agree or disagree with that treatment being effective or not or whether there is the need for further research so it's very important that you're you're having this logical flow and that you're evaluating each article that you're reading looking at the pros and cons contrasting it with other articles or you know that are similar or against and then providing your own opinion is the best way you could go about when you're critically analyzing so before ending this video, I just want to give you guys my top techniques as to how you could further enhance your essay. Number one being that you always have a marking criteria and your assignment brief. Now, the reason why I cannot emphasize enough why you have these two copies either printed out or virtual on your phone, laptop, iPad or any other technological device that you have with you is because number one, it'll make your life a lot easier because you'll have a holistic overview of what that marker is going to mark you on and what how those marks have been allocated. So, you know, for the introduction, for the main body, the discussion, the conclusion, whether there are, there are any mark allocations for any images, diagrams, figures, tables, you know, any, any mark allocations for the formatting, presentation, or even referencing, having that clarity will ensure that you can incorporate them within your essays to maximize your chances of gaining all the marks. Furthermore, you know, by having your assignment brief, not only will you gain a 
you know a bit more context as to what needs to be incorporated within your essay but also factors like when your deadline is or what word limit you need to be around to ensure that you're not losing those basic marks is extremely crucial so you know i would really encourage you to have a copy of those two documents with you when you're preparing not only for your essay but any piece of coursework or even for your examinations it's extremely cru crucial you may not have the marking criteria for the exam uh, but you will definitely have kind of um a, a probably a, a checklist of all the learning outcomes that you've got to have covered at least or topics uh before your exam so be sure to familiarize yourself with all those uh, my number two tip is with regards to referencing so be sure that you are aware of the correct format and style that your institute or university adheres to in terms of referencing i would go as far as familiarizing myself with uh you know referencing apps and websites to make it a lot easier when you come back to referencing and to ensure that you're gaining maximum marks for your referencing. And my third and final tip would be to review your work. It's extremely crucial that you're not only reviewing your work whilst you're doing it and even after, but I'd state that it, you know, it'd be extremely important that you give yourself one or two days of buffer time, um, which is just time away from your work. You don't look at it, you don't improve it, you, you don't do anything with it. You just Give yourself some time to just relax and just forget about that for a day or two uh, and then re-review your work and revisit it to uh, correct any spelling mistakes that you've made, any punctuation or grammatical errors that you've made uh, or, you know, any sentences that don't make any sense. You know, you will have that opportunity to then improve on that. You could go as far as, you know, maybe even getting a second opinion from your family, friends or even your lecturers or professors if they have time to gain some constructive feedback in order for you to understand, uh, you know, where you may have made mistakes, where it could be difficult for someone to understand or interpret any of the content that you've included within your essay so that you can kind of improve on that and maximise your chances of getting a better mark. So that is it for today's video, guys. If you found anything useful, if any of those techniques have been useful, be sure to like this video and consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon right next to it to make sure that you're regularly updated with all my videos. Till next time guys, take care, bye!